Hello. In this tutorial, we're going to do some basic compositing work in After Effects to make a spaceship realistically float in space. I'll give you a preview of what we're aiming for here. Have a look. So as you can see, the spaceship is floating and moving just a little bit to the left. in the same manner that the clouds are. What you'll notice also is that we've, we've got a nice, you can kind of see it just in front of the spaceship here, a bit of cloud moving at a slightly faster speed, which gives, it gives the um, general scene a bit of a sense of depth and makes it hopefully look a bit more realistic. Okay, let's get to work. First thing, let's just close that effect control panel and let's start with a new composition. I'm going to do that by selecting my video footage, which I've got here, just a simple shot of a park where I live. I'm going to grab that and bring it down to the new comp button here, like so. Now, if I track through my footage, it was a very windy day, as you can see. I've got a couple of wobbles on the camera. You can see there's one there. There's quite a bad one at the end, so I'm probably going to just move my preview bar so we don't get to see that too much. Now, the thing we want to do first of all is actually track the motion of the clouds because we're going to attach that spaceship to the clouds in order that the spaceship moves at the same speed. Now, to do that, you're going to need this tracker panel down on the bottom right here. Now, if you haven't got it, I'm just going to close it. You simply go to Window and Tracker. Now, to track the clouds, make sure that You've got your video layer selected. Oh, by the way, I'm obviously tracking these clouds. What I'm doing, you can do in any, you know, sort of footage that you've shot. But I suppose you're going to need something moving. So I would suggest you try and get some footage of clouds moving, you know, fairly obviously across the screen. I'm going to select the video footage and click on Track Motion. And this little tracker facility pops up here. It's quite small, but I'm just going to open it up like so. You want to make it fairly large. And the larger it is, the more assistance it's going to have in tracking your object. Now in my case, it's going to be one of these clouds. And I'm going to, I, the best thing to do is try and find something that's got a good level of contrast. I mean, this isn't brilliant. We've got grey cloud here. It's all grey and a bit. It's going to be tricky, but we'll give it a go. I'm going to move the tracker. And I'm going to go for, let's have a look. I'm going to try it about here. There's a grey spot there, and this blue hopefully should be enough for it to latch onto. It works best when it's got good contrasting colours, and I'm hoping there's enough white and enough blue here for it to work. Let's find out. I'm going to make sure my time marker is at zero. And down on the tracker here, in fact, let's just raise it up a little bit. A bit easier to see. I'm going to click on this button which means when I press it, it's going to analyze the pixels as they move forward through the clip. So let's click on this button now, Analyze Forward. Let's see what it does. So it's finished its tracking work. And as you can see, if I scrub up and down the timeline, you can see the track. It's labeled track point one here. You can see the track is just moving gently in the same way that the clouds are. We're going to use that track to make the spaceship move in the same way so it looks like it's part of the scenery. The first thing we need to do though is create what's known as a null object. We're going to attach that null to the track point and then eventually attach the spaceship to the null. It sounds a bit long-winded but bear with us. If you follow the steps you should be okay. Go to layer, new and null. We've got a null here. You can't actually see it, but it is there. Go down to your tracker and click on Edit Target. Now, at the moment, it's not going to select the video layer. It can't do that, but it is going to select the null. So make sure you've got the null selected, like so. Click on OK. The next step is to click on Apply. What that'll do is attach all of those track points to the null. Let's do that now. Click on Apply. It's going to ask us what dimensions we want the tracker to move in space. and We want them to move on both the X 
and the Y dimension. So it will move left and right and it will move up and down as the track progresses. So click on OK. And what you've now got, you can now see the null. And as you can see, we've gone away from the layer footage now. We were on the layer footage when we were doing the track. We're now back on composition. You can see that null is now moving across space. This is the null here, this object. And it's moving just ever so slightly with the clouds. So next stage, let's bring in our spaceship. This is just one I downloaded from the internet. I'm going to bring it in. As you can see, it's got a green background. Now, you can remove that green background in Premiere. You could do it in Photoshop. I'm going to do it here um, just to keep things a little bit neater. It may be that you've got one from the internet that's not got a green background, but my one has. So if you do need to get rid of it, we're going to select the spaceship. As you can see, I've spelt it space shape. Um, terrible spelling there. So let's uh, just change that. And let's put that back as spaceship so it makes sense and it knows what it is. So select the spaceship, go to effects, and we want to key out that green background. And I'm going to go for key light 1.2. Under the effects panel here, we can now see key light, like so. Select this eyedropper and select the color green. By doing that, it tells key light that's the color we're going to knock out like so. Now it looks like it's done a pretty good job but it's probably not quite as good as you'd think. If you click on here and go to status, this actually tells us it's not that great. That spaceship should be completely white and all these grey areas around the edges here, they should be gone and should be black. Now to amend that, open screen mat, clip black, so it just tidies up the edges like so, and then clip white so the whole spaceship fills in white. If you've got a good white spaceship and a black area around here, you know you've done a good job. Go back to status, click on final result, and there is our spaceship. So now that we've knocked out that green background, we're going to move the spaceship up here. We don't want it to be too huge, a bit too unrealistic. Let's move it to about there, that'll do. And we want to parent this spaceship to this null. As we can see, the null is moving left to right. We want that spaceship to move in the same way. The null, of course, as we did earlier, it's um, now moving because we attached it to the motion tracker and we want to attach the spaceship to that null. We do that in the parenting section here. Now you can click on the drop down menu and attach it to the null like so, or you can use the pick whip to attach it to the null here. This means that this spaceship is now parented to the null and will follow it wherever it goes. Now, as I now scrub through the timeline, you can see that spaceship is now moving. Let's lower the resolution a bit. Let's put it to about a third. And let's just see if that motion looks good. Let's just render that back. It's not bad. Yeah, that's moving in a fairly good way. Whoops, now I've got the sound turned on from that clip. Let's hide that. Don't need to hear that. Let's go back and try and render that again. Yeah, that's moving in a fairly realistic way. The camera also, you can see, because it's such a windy day, it's got some bumps in it as well. So if the spaceship moves with the bumps of the camera, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Okay, that's not bad. Now, if you left it like that, you know, that's, that's a moderately good start. And you probably could leave it like that if you're doing something at a sort of, I don't know, slightly below semi-professional level. But what we want is to actually make it look like it's part of the clouds that it's floating through. And the way to do that now is to create another layer above it, a layer that actually has some clouds in it. So to do that, let's go to Layer, New, and Solid. Don't worry about the color. It could be any color. We're going to change that anyway. Mine just happens to be pale gray. Click on OK. And there's our pale gray solid. Now, we want that to be about the same size as the spaceship, maybe a bit bigger. Let's put it above the spaceship like so. Make sure you've got that solid selected in the timeline, then go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Turbulent Noise, and it's here that we're going to make our clouds. Under the Fractal Type, we're going to go, of course, for Cloudy. The Noise Type, we're going to go for Linear. 
we're going to set the contrast to about 120 and the brightness we're going to take that down to about say minus 10. At the moment it doesn't look anything like we want so the real trick actually is to open transform here, deselect uniform scaling and we're going to scale the width to about 470. Let's type that in, make it neat. And this height, uh, 510. Now you don't have to be accurate about that. It could be 500 on both and it would probably look just as good. So we're kind of getting there, not bad at all. The next thing we want to do though is kind of integrate it a bit more effectively into the background. And the way to do that is to select it and we're going to add a mask. And we've got various masks up here, polygon, ellipse, rectangle. These can also be shape tools and just to let you know if we don't have that selected it will draw a shape. So make sure you've got the pale solid selected. We're going to click on the square. If you do a double tap it's added a mask already to it. You can actually see it down here. So let's open that mask and let's feather it right out like so. 250 give or take. But down here is the expansion. We want to contract it in. And I'm going to do it quite a bit. Let's pull it down to about 300 odd. As you can see, it's starting to actually create something that's looking a little bit like clouds. Uh, what we'll do is we'll kind of fiddle around with it now, but maybe adjust it a little bit later on if we need to. But 250 on the feather, minus 350 on the expansion. That should do the job. So what do we got? Okay, that's not bad. It's moving fairly well. The thing that's going to really bring it to life, though, is to have these clouds moving. So this pale solid has got the turbulent noise on it that's generating the clouds. So we want to animate these clouds as well. And the way to do that is to use offset turbulence here. If you scrub left to right, you can actually animate those clouds. Now, again, you know, depending on what you've shot, the size of your spaceship, where you've put it, this isn't an exact science, so you've got to have a bit of trial and error here. Um, I'm going to put my time marker at zero, and let's just sort of experiment with it. Let's set a keyframe for offset turbulence. Let's go through to the end of the clip, and let's scrub that. Now, the more you scrub it, actually, the faster it goes, the more realistic it might look. But let's sort of scrub through and see how it looks. Not bad. Now as you can see, the cloud layer I've generated is moving faster than the clouds behind, which is good. That gives it a sense of depth, which makes it feel to our eyes that little bit more realistic. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, let's just close that up. Getting a bit messy. Let's close it up as well. Let's render that back and just see what it looks like. It's not bad but it might need a little bit of repositioning and a bit of work still. Let's just pause that. Um, if you go down to your toggle switches and modes here, let's bring up our blending modes. And on that pale solid, I'm going to put it to try add. Oh dear, no. Um, let's go for screen. That's a little bit better. It's made the clouds a bit more powdery. Okay. Still don't think the clouds are in the right place exactly, so let's just click on that solid and if we move them up a bit, that may work in our favour a bit more because essentially what we want to create is that sense that the top half of the spaceship is in the clouds and the bottom half of the spaceship isn't. It's sort of just hanging above our heads. And if you bring that entire layer down, that's not going to work. So put it up to maybe about there and that should do the job. Again, the real key is, on this pale solid layer, open turbulent noise, and it's the offset turbulence here. It's the amount that you make that speed up that will really have the effect. The more offset turbulence you set here, the faster the clouds here will move from uh, right to left. And again, the faster the clouds go here, as long as these clouds are going faster than what's in the background, you can have a nice realistic image. Okay, let's play it back and see what we've got. Yeah, not too bad. Fairly happy with that. Okay, folks, I hope that worked for you. See you in the next tutorial.